A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of all the worlds. The path of those you have blessed with your guidance. Bless these graduates as they continue to pursue their dreams. Provide them with the courage to overcome all obstacles. To find strength in their capacity to serve others. And to respect the diversity of humankind. Bless our graduates with patience as they explore new horizons. Bless them with humility as they enjoy success and happiness. Bless them with compassion and generosity for the poor, the sick, and the suffering. Bless them with gratitude for their family, friends, and mentors who have supported them throughout their lives. Help them to be mindful that true success is born of meaningful relationships and the comfort of a caring community that embraces peace and justice. And bless us all as we share in the joy of their accomplishments. Amin, amin, amin. Welcome, welcome to the 2021 graduation ceremony for Sophia University. I'm Dr. Stephen Gold, the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Interim Provost here at Sophia University, and it is my pleasure to open the ceremonies and welcome everyone. Uh, today, commencement, the day you commence, commence moving forward, is a day our students move forward with all the new skills that they've acquired during their educational experience. We will be awarding degrees today, doctoral degrees, we'll be awarding a PhD in psychology, in transpersonal psychology, uh, a PsyD degree, a doctorate in psychology, that's a clinical degree. We'll be awarding a Master's of Arts in transpersonal psychology, a Master's of Arts in counseling psychology, a Master's of Business Administration, a Master's of Science in computer science, as well as our undergraduate psychology degree completion program. So this is a wide range of students and with a wide range of skills that they've learned and will carry through the rest of their life. But none of this would have happened without first the support of the parents, the family members, the friends. We have to remember and acknowledge first that almost, almost no student, rare is the student who gets through an education without a strong support system at home. And as I'm sure you, all the family members are saying, this is as much your degree today as it is the graduate's degree. And we acknowledge and thank you for all that love and support. Um, and secondly, of course, the faculty. We need to acknowledge Sophia's University's outstanding faculty that create a community of learners, a place where teachers and students study and learn together. Our core faculty, are involved in everything. They help govern the university, they teach and advise students, guide dissertations and theses, and help everything move. Our adjunct faculty offer specialized teaching in very specific areas of transpersonal psychology, computer science, business administration, and such. So we'd like to thank and honor all of our faculty who create every day this robust learning community that we all enjoy supporting. And then, of course, the Sophia staff. Sophia staff, made up of just some of the nicest people you're ever going to meet, uh, led our dean of students, and particularly Rosalie Cook. I want to thank her for all her hard work on everything but on graduation today. But, but everyone, the uh, IT department, registrar, admissions, facilities, we have a phenomenal staff here at Sophia University, so focused as a team on student success. And it's a real blessing to be a part of such a focused organization. And that focus exists principally 
because of the guiding influence of the board of trustees and we need to be clear how much all of us appreciate the guidance the support the assistance the board of trustees has given our president the faculty and the entire sophia community we appreciate their time and their talent um, after the president's remarks we will hear from katherine lauren who will be representing sophia university's board of trustees so welcome everyone it is now my great pleasure and distinct honor to introduce the president and ceo of sophia university dr alan cahoon good morning congratulations i mean maybe afternoon i'm sure in some places where you're involved but for for me it's uh, it's morning so congratulations to our graduates today on behalf of Sophia University, I can tell you how proud we are. Um, made it through. This is a, um, a time for celebration, recognition. Um, you know, this has been a challenging and interesting year. Uh, we appreciate um, that you have been successful through the struggles to succeed to accommodate the changes we've had to make in your program, your schedules, uh, as a consequences of the pandemic. For, importantly, for your perseverance, your determination and commitment to your learning, and to contributing to the learning of your colleagues, your teachers, and Sophia University. I'd also like to recognize those who supported you on your journey, your family, your friends, and your colleagues, your teachers, and all the essential workers that we have learned to depend on and discovered that we need to acknowledge them, but not recognize them in the past. I hope you've taken some time to step back and reflect on, on the learning journey. What's this experience been for you? How has Sophia as a university, it's, it's, its approach to transpersonal and professional education affected you, altered you, positioned you for, for the future. So it's an inflection point in terms of kind of consolidating and reflecting on the past, kind of def defining how that, what that means for you, and then projecting you going forward. As I mentioned, uh, Sophia University was founded on the concept and praxis of transpersonal philosophy. It's a humanistic approach which values wholeness and extends beyond the personal or the individual. Our origin as the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology identified transper the reason for a study of transpersonal psychology because it was concerned with the study of humans' highest potential. The recognition, understanding, and realization of the unitive, spiritual, and transcendental states of consciousness. Something to, that we are trying to inculcate in our, our array of educational delivery and educational programs. This concertation has been criticized by some for emphasizing oneness and holism and at the expense of, expense of diversity. However, I think it produces the opposite as it seeks to empower us as individuals with a greater sense of self-awareness, better able to understand how we are impacted by our environment around us and importantly, how we can impact in our ecosystem. The knowledge you have acquired through your learning journey at Sophia and the learning philosophy on which it's based empowers you, challenges you to become change agents and social advocates. It's true that although ultimately what we choose to learn and remember is is very personal and, and sometimes selfish it's about us how we define it until the point in which we decide 
what we choose to do with what we've learned. It can be seen as very re reflective, trans transactional, and, and there are no two learning journeys that are the same. What we learn is based on what prepared us to learn, our previous learning, our educational experience, our language, our culture, our level of self-awareness, our feeling of self-esteem, our degree of of emotional intelligence, among other things. As a teacher, as the son of two teachers, I believe that education comes with a, a responsibility, a challenge. And that is, how do we demonstrate what it is that we've learned to ourselves? You may wonder at those assignments, those exams, those papers, et cetera. We try to identify uh, and determine to some degree what we hope you've learned in the, as a result of your courses. But fundamentally, how do you demonstrate what you've learned to yourselves? Importantly, how do you show that or demonstrate that to those who've supported you in this education journey? How have you chosen to, to communicate that to your teachers and your learning colleagues. Colleagues, what is it that we've actually learned that we take away and use? What's the, what's the lasting knowledge of the experience? And the question is, how do, we, how do we choose to share our knowledge to transform ourselves, our communities, our practices and our professions? as a result of the knowledge that we've acquired and we study. I think that's something to reflect on. And I, I'd like to challenge you to think about how the context of these days provides you with an opportunity uh, for answering some of those questions. Over the past year, especially, we've witnessed the devastating impacts of racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. We have seen the face of, of hatred, of fear, depravity, inequity, violence. I, I challenge you to think how your educational experience at Sophia can help you, your family, your community, your nation, and your planet address these terrible forces. What I hope we have learned is that these impacts, things that we've seen, are not just happening to other people. It's happening to all of us, all impacted and affected by what's going around, what's going on. We are all unquestionably connected, whether the face, the language, or the traditions resemble ours or not. Our fundamental humanity is shared no matter the household in which you were born. What we have and what we've seen reinforce and magnify the experience of systemic inequity and the slow progress that has been made over the years in our society, in our communities, and in our own context of higher education. To be truly inclusive, we must have the courage to talk directly about the specifics of discrimination, about attacks and exclusion, while promoting our core values as an institution of equity, inclusion, and diversity. So often the inclination, inclination is to turn away when something feels uncomfortable or unsetting. As, as a lifelong educator, I believe the power of education to make a difference in the lives of individuals and groups, to make people question their assumptions, probe their discomfort, and open their eyes and hearts to see things in new ways. So what the privilege of being a teacher is to provide a context that allows people to see things differently. The truth is there comes a time when inaction reveals more than just the betrayal of principles. It portends complicity 
and acquiescence, if not permission. That time is long past due. Sophia is a diverse community, a diversity that strengthens our community and our educational mission. But it only does so if we embrace that diversity, realizing that it is more than a range of skin tones at the table and more than an accounting of backgrounds. Embracing diversity means recognizing the inequitable burden and the fear some members of our community carry simply because of their skin tone, their cultural or religious practice, their sexual orientation or identity, where they were born or how they choose to live. It means believing it is the responsibility of every member of our community to stand up against discrimination inequity and prejudice. It means we do not ask our black brothers and sisters or Asian brothers or, or, or sisters to carry this burden alone. It means that although we are a small community, we have within us the capacity to confront racism and build a stronger, more just and equitable society. Maybe now is the time to reconnect as individuals and a community, and a, as a community, to our own declaration of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which you can find on the webpage if you haven't looked at it recently. It's a time to be reminded of the mission that guides us in our collective commitment to, at SOFIA, to service, to social justice, to diversity, to inclusion. Let me clarify, it's not just sufficient for institutions of higher education to make public statements, write policies with respect to diversity, inclusion, and equity. We must also seek diversity as the moral thing, the right thing to do, to make a moral commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Through what we do, we demonstrate what we believe. As members of the Sophie University community, Help us support you to use the knowledge you've acquired as a result of your educational experience at SOFIA to become, social ad, to become the social advocates that we need today. And as members of our community, as alumni, help us as an institution continue to be responsive and advocates for change. Racism, discrimination, xenophobia, are largely overt and hidden, sometimes individual and, and systemic, sometimes blatant and audacious acts of violence and pernicious, barely perceptible microaggressions. Of course, those microaggressions are barely perceptible only to the per perpetrators, perpetrators, those who suffer them are always painfully aware. As our society and our nation are pulled apart by the powerful centrifugal forces of hatred, intolerance, bigotry, ignorance, selfishness, and greed, faculty, staff, and students, and you as Sophia alumni can serve as vital and essential wellsprings of the centripetal forces that hold us together that lead to critical discourse and analysis, to understanding, to, to resolve, to action and healing through the current and future crisis. As part of SOFIA's extended learning community, become sources of knowledge, sources of tolerance, sources of understanding, and sources of action, sources of change. The Board of Trustees has recently appro approved the establishment of SOFIA's Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning. Based upon our transpersonal origins, we hope it will become a place that inspires discovery and that will host and inspire respectful debate, where we can search for solutions, where we can engage in discussions, where we can share information and perspective. Social advocacy is fundamentally an individual commitment. 
as each one of us think about what we can do at this moment, this inflection point in terms of our career and where we're going from here, I encourage you to think of the message of Dr. Martin Luther King when he said, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Social advocacy in an era of increased racism, discrimination, and xenophobia starts within us one step at a time. And it begins with our personal acknowledgement of how these, they have impacted us and the role that they play in our interactions with others. There is no place for racism and intolerance in our communities. We are a community that celebrates and embraces diversity as one of our intrinsic values. We are all enriched by inclusivity and are stronger because of the, the differences. We learn from seeing things through the eyes of other people and seeing how things we can learn and enhance our knowledge through that, that understanding. We must stand united with members of our community who are experiencing fear, anguish, and anger in light of the numerous and repeated acts towards the racialized members of our communities. There's no place in our society for racism, prejudice, homophobia, and xenophobia. It is our responsibility as members of a diverse and vibrant university community to speak out against these prejudices, to dispel fear and stereotypes and, dis and condemn discriminatory behavior. Collectively, we need to create spaces where people feel they have value and alter the conversation from one of aggression to compassion. Amanda Gorn, uh, Gorman, our first youth uh, poet laureate, and a very powerful new voice for uh, uh, in a, uh, a powerful new voice for social advocacy in her poem Earthwise, galvanizes hope for applying learning in these troubled times. Know that the future of the wise planet, planet lies right in sight, right in all of us. Trust this earth uprising. All of us bring light to an exciting solution never tried before, for it is our hope that implores us at our uncompromis uh, uncompromising core to keep rising up for an earth more than worth fighting for. I challenge us to use this poem as a call to action to become the change makers that our communities desperately need, to use our knowledge that you have acquired as a result of your education experience at Sophia to become social advocates for a better world, to take your knowledge and apply it in your personal, professional, and community lives. Finally, my advice to you as graduates today, surrounded by supportive family and friends, first, demonstrate the value of, the learning, of your learning experience by what you do for yourself, your family, your community, your country, and the world. Second, remember your learning doesn't stop here, continuing to learn. Life is about acquiring new information and knowledge. It's the energy that we need going forward. Third, embrace the uncertainty of today. It is a laboratory for learning. It's this context that keeps changing that allows us to, new, to learn new, theory, new things. Fourth, be fearless as it challenges you. Don't waste time on regret. Enjoy what you bring to life. Remember what it is. And finally, teach what you have learned. That's how we pass on the knowledge. The United Nations, UNESCO, defined five pillars of learning learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together, learning to be, 
and learning to transforce, transform self and society. I think the spectrum of learning from knowledge, application, working together, learning to become the person we have the capacity and then use that knowledge for a better world is the challenge that we face. And I challenge you to think about it. Know that your faculty, staff and administration at Sophie are proud of your educational journey. We're honored to celebrate your achievements today. We salute your efforts. Thank you for being part of our learning and our educational journey at Sophia. All the best going forward. Thank you. I would like now to introduce uh, David Fuguli, who is the chair of uh, Sophia University's Board of Trustees. Hello, my name is Catherine Lauren and I have the honor of serving on the Board of Trustees at Sophia University. It is my distinct pleasure on behalf of the Board to bring greetings and offer congratulations to you on the occasion of your graduation. This is indeed an auspicious day. Your hard work and perseverance have paid off and you are now poised and ready to embark on the next phase of your career. In spite of the COVID-19 challenges that have forever changed the world, deeply impacted higher education, and indeed deeply impacted the way in which you have been able to complete your degree program, I believe that there are new and exciting opportunities that lie ahead for you. The Board of Trustees works behind the scenes to make sure that an education at Sophia University is indeed an outstanding one. And so I hope that your time and your experience here has been a fulfilling one and that you hold fond memories of your time with us. On behalf of the board, we wish you the greatest of success in your next endeavors. In the words of the great poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he says, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Congratulations and all the very best. Thank you. The theme for our graduation this year is social advocacy in an era of increased racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. We are very fortunate at Sophia University to welcome Diana Lee Inosanto as our keynote speaker, who will be addressing these issues, particularly as they relate to the Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. Diana Lee Inosanto was born in Los Angeles and is the daughter of Dan Inosanto, the close friend and associate of Bruce Lee and internationally known martial artist. Diana was fortunate to grow up in a household where a who's who of martial artists came through, allowing her to study from a wide range of international martial arts, Jeet Kune Do, Filipino Escrima and Kali, French Savat and many other styles. And Diana Inosanto was a staple for many years on the covers of martial arts magazines, including Black Belt Magazine, Martial Arts, Inside Karate, Self-Defense and Inside Kung Fu. Diana Lee Inosanto was named Woman of the Year by Black Belt Magazine in 2009. This started a career in stunt work and stunt choreography over many years in a range of films and television productions. You might know Diana as the stunt double uh, for Buffy the Vampire Slayer on television. And over time, she became a stunt trainer to the stars, the actors like Mil Melissa McCarthy and others. But her directorial de debut came in 2008 with the film The Sensei. The Sensei, a film she wrote, directed, and starred in, would be one of the earliest digitally released films distributed on Netflix and iTunes. The Sensei took place in the 1980s and tells the story of a gay teenager bullied in a rural town during the height of the AIDS epidemic. The film won numerous awards at national and international film festivals. The Sensei was supported in its production by the Matthew Shepard Foundation and earned Diana the Asian American Justice Center 2011 American Courage Award presented in DC in front of members of Congress. Shortly thereafter, Diana became the first woman to receive the Maverick Award at the AOF International Film Festival. 
over the years as a social justice activist beyond what her work with the LGBTQ community, in recent times, Diana has been very active in the Wash the Hate public service announcement campaign, trying to address growing hate incidents against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders since the outbreak of COVID-19. She was asked to speak with other prominent Asian Americans from the film and fashion industry, speaking in front of panels in front of Nike employees worldwide. In 2016, Diana was a guest at the White House, joining Asian American leaders and influencers for the Filipino History Month, championing, championing the Congressional Gold Medal Bill for World War II Filipino Americans. In 2020, Diana Nisanto published her first book, a children's story, The Curious Mind of Sebastian. It's a book about raising a child who is autistic. It's a book that is uh, readily available for children and for parents who face special needs, a, a cause and a, a, an area that Diana has been championing for many, many years. And of course, most enjoyably, most fun in, in 2020, Diana Lee and Asano appeared in an episode of Disney's The Mandalorian, playing the role of evil magistrate Morgan Elsbeth, which she played to a terrifying tea. I'm now with great pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce to Sophia University's community, Diana Lee and Asanto. Hello, everybody. Tis the season for graduations, and that is why I stole my son's graduation gown. He just graduated from high school. Anyway, greetings to all faculty, staff, families, and of course, our amazing graduates at Sophia University. Thank you for welcoming me into your world virtually on this special day. I'm so honored. Let me introduce myself. I'm Diana Lino Santo, and some of you might know me from my recent role in Star Wars, The Mandalorian on Disney+, Plus, where I play magistrate Morgan Elsbeth, a shady woman who tries bribing a Mandalorian to kill a Jedi, only to battle her Beskar spear with the lightsabers, of Ahsoka Tano, former apprentice of Anakin Skywalker, also known as Darth Vader. Clearly, my character has some deep-rooted, power-hungry issues and needs her own transpersonal psychologist in a galaxy far, far away. <sighs> but long before that, I was raised as a child in a charm circle of world-renowned martial artists. Um, my father, is Dan in Osanto, and my godfather is the late Bruce Lee. And coming from this charm circle of martial artists, I learned a thing or two, combatively speaking, about teaching martial arts. And so, through my younger years, I had traveled around the world with my beautiful husband, Ron, who I've been married to for 25 years, teaching self-defense, and more specifically, my godfather's martial arts and philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, as well as Filipino martial arts and a variety of other styles and systems. And sometimes because of my fighting skills, Hollywood would come calling for me as a stomp woman where I would throw down in a fight against an alien in Star Trek or a vampire in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We all have our start somewhere. So when Dr. Stephen Gold asked me to speak to all of you as your commencement speaker, I thought, Wait, what? Even though it's an honor, it's um, somewhat intimidating. But then after having a meeting of the minds with Dr. Gold, I've, who I've known for over two decade, decades, um, I got a better idea of why he wanted me to speak a little bit more in detail about my journey in life. Metaphorically speaking, we have all felt a great um, disturbance in the force of life as millions around the world have had to deal with a pandemic of what the pandemic has triggered economically combined with a lot of social tribulations and in human suffering. And thus I like to share my journey in social justice activism and what inspired me and how that might resonate and connect with your own personal journey out there as the graduating class of 2021 because I suspect as graduates of Sophia University, you are dedicated to be a force for a higher good and purpose. So I was inspired to be a force for good via the way of activism inspired from my own family of political activists in the 1920s. 
my grandfather, Sebastian Inosanto, Santo, was known as the founder of the Filipino Cultural or Agricultural Labor's Association, the first union for farm workers in California. You have to understand, creating something like a union for Filipino workers was the equivalent of being a civil rights activist because when my grandfather came over from the Philippines and arrived in the ports of Stockton, California, along with many other immigrants traveling with him, that was during the time that the Philippines was a commonwealth under the United States government. And despite being given an American education in the Philippines, he and his colleagues could barely find work other than in farming. It wasn't uncommon for even a doctor to be working in the fields of San Joaquin Valley farming. Americans here, particularly white America, weren't exactly rolling out the welcome mat for Asian immigrants. American educated men from the Philippines were systematically being shut out economically, despite being told that all men were created equal in the eyes of our government. There's nothing worse than going out to try and get something to eat only to be greeted with a sign hanging on the door of businesses reading, no dogs, no Filipinos. My grandparents and my father as a child and his sister would have to contend with what was the equivalent of the American version of apartheid. Something that we still don't necessarily see recorded in our American history books. During my father's childhood, Filipinos, Chinese, and Japanese Americans were forced to reside in what was called the Oriental Quarters. Curfew was at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. And if you were Filipino or any other Asian descent, you were forbidden to walk around to the north side of Stockton, or you could face violent consequences. Policies that impacted African Americans were virtually the same for Asian Americans. I won't go into the periodic hate crimes that existed back then. Many times the police weren't too sympathetic and I can say there wasn't much you could do in those days except take one day at a time. And that's what my activist family did though, through education and through recording and documenting their experiences as Americans, as Asian Americans. More important, their stories and historical notes would be documented in a book called Filipinos, Forgotten Asian Americans by Fred Cordova, a book whose title I happily would later see upon my visit with other Filipino American leaders at the White House in 2016. Recently, I carried on that activist spirit in my own personal life as an autism mother who dared write a children's book with my adult autistic son about how autism first impacted us as a family. And nearly 70% of the autism community is unemployed and that's before the pandemic. My son, who is also an artist, would get so depressed. So I said, forget waiting for the world to discover your artistic talent, son. We will do it ourselves. So we put out a children's book through Amazon Books and it's called The Curious Mind of Sebastian. And it is my hope to signal to other families with special needs children that we must create a pathway for our loved ones and let the world know we are here and we are part of the fabric of society. Also as an activist, I was a concerned American woman who herself had her own Me Too experience in the male-driven industry of Hollywood and marched in the Me Too movement with my other fellow American sisters out there because I experienced when making my independent film years ago that I was one of 7% of female filmmakers that had released a film despite film schools for years having a 50-50 male-female ratio that wasn't translating over into the entertainment business. For many years, women and minorities systematically were being locked out of the game of creating films. I like to report things are now improving in Hollywood and there are more women getting their opportunities in key positions that were once dominated by men in directing, producing and writing. Meaning change is happening. Continuing on, as an activist, I locked arms with Asian American leaders and more specifically, 
Filipino American leaders and influencers at the White House during President Barack Obama's last year in office as we sought to raise public and academic awareness of World War II Filipino veterans who sacrificed so much for this country only to be denied the dignity and respect of the heroic services for decades by the U.S. government and getting no recognition for military benefits to care for themselves or their families. Why? Because institutional racism can run deep and long for decades. So my fellow activists, we worked hard to collectively get the passage of the Congressional Gold Medal Bill Act and to see that our Filipino World War II veterans contribution to our country, to our freedoms, would be historically remembered at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and that they would finally be awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for their services and their sacrifices. Just as important, over 10 years ago, my activism and LGBTQ rights rolled over into my work as a filmmaker and actress when I wrote the first independent film about a bullied gay teenager living during the early rise of the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s who learns to find personal transforma transformation when he meets a female martial artist teacher that shows him the way of self-defense and more important, that he has the right to defend himself against hatred and self-hatred. In other words, learning the power to, of loving oneself despite living in a world that might reject you because you are different. People thought, um, that I was crazy to take a chance at making this small film and its subject matter. But I, I felt in my heart a calling. And sure, I could have easily made a mindless, senseless action film. It would have been so much easier. But I wanted to express myself honestly and with more depth as a human being. Through the art of cinema and storytelling, I felt I could spread awareness for change, compassion and empathy for others different for, from ourselves, through a medium like film. And I'm glad that I took the risk of making the sensei. It wasn't easy. I was rejected to film in several locations in Colorado at that time due to certain school board members fearing that I had questionable values and that I could negatively influence young people. But that struggle to stick to my calling as an activist led me on a path to meet Judy Shepard founder of the Matthew Shepard Foundation and mother of Matthew Shepard, a gay American student who became a victim of an anti-gay hate crime where he was murdered in Laramie, Wyoming in 1998. His senseless killing was one of the pivotal cases that triggered the kind of awareness in this country of the real danger that people within the LGBTQ community faced on a regular basis. It was Matthew's story that inspired me to write the sensei, especially when around that same time, my dear cousin came out as a gay woman. And after completing my film, I was met by a lot of resistance, even in the martial arts community. But my godfather, Uncle Bruce, had a saying, when times got tough, walk on. So I walked on, strong in my convictions, with my husband and I flipping most of the bill to complete this film while receiving death threats thrown at me and my family and some of my cast and crew. All because I wanted to make a film about a gay teen learning martial arts, but it was worth it. Because shortly after that, representatives at the Matthew Shepard Foundation would introduce me to the late Congressman John Lewis, civil rights activist who marched with Dr. Martin Luther King. And we talked briefly because he heard a little about my small film and he was working closely with the foundation along with the late Senator Ted Kennedy and Senator Gordon Smith. And they were working on to pass, at that time, the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Now, um, for those of you that don't know the James Byrd case, Mr. Byrd was an African-American killed in a horrific hate crime where he was dragged by a truck to his death by three white supremacists. And this took place in Jasper, Texas. The new measures of this act would expand federal hate crime laws to include crimes motivated by a victim's actual or perceived gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability. This act also gave federal authorities even greater ability 
to engage in hate crimes investigations that local authorities chose not to pursue. It was overwhelming in a positive way to be in the company of people following a similar path as myself, as we were all covering this activism from different angles. Two years later, I would receive the American Courage Award given by the Asian American Justice Center in Washington, DC, and presented by Tom Perez, DNC chairman, who was at that time the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights. I met several members of Congress and humanitarian activists who were present to celebrate others and their work to be a force for change. I remember thinking and pondering the work of social activists I, uh, like Judy Shepard and, and, and Congressman John Lewis and many other remarkable people who endured great hardship, took important risk to do the right thing, right thing and manifest a better tomorrow. I realized that my own unique road to activism was worth it. And still to this day, I receive messages from random strangers who thank me for making my film. I have educators that now show my film in their schools to teach compassion and empathy and to spark conversation in their classrooms about social change and justice. And then I thought about one inspirational, important person who was there for me at the beginning of my journey as a young adult, especially as a single mom of an autistic four-year-old son who, bear, who with barely any resources at my disposal to keep me sane, my, psycho my psychologist. She was who I shared my hopes, my dreams, and my fears. My psychologist, God bless my psychologist and the like, where would I be without her today? I mean, sure, I had great role models in my lifetime, but a, a good psychologist is like a life coach, giving you skills, strategies, and direction to sometimes deal with the madness of our world. I realized I was learning through our sessions to be an activist for my own well-being and my own mental health. I learned how to climb a mountain of life with her guidance. And over the course of several years, I have worked with other therapists for the sake of my son. I love that all of you are going to help so many people like me to discover and operate at their personal best. So upon learning more about Sophia University and the amazing students they cultivate, I understood that the overall mission of this university is to be a force for good. And you guys are like the Obi-Wan Kenobis of our society. And to me, being a force for good is a form of humanitarian activism, helping others reach and bring forth their personal best. We have all seen throughout the media and the news, the harsh times that we have been living in. And as our society opens up more and more, and after the long haul, the pandemic, and the negative things it triggered within our society, the timing couldn't be more perfect for you graduating a Sophia University to make your impact on the lives of others. This is your time. Everything I see taught at Sophia University is, in its own way, a unique and holistic form of activism and awareness of using personal tools to engage ourselves in life. I'm excited that the world is going to get this deployment, a transpersonal psychologist and the like from Sophia University. This is your moment. The planets and the stars have aligned. Talk about perfect timing. We need you. The world needs you and your life force and you you will take with you the skills and knowledge learned in your degree. And I know you are all going to help people find a way to move mountains. I wish you graduates of Sophia University Godspeed. May the road of life be kind to you. And hey, may the force be with you. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Diana, for the 
words of, of understanding, helping us to understand the issues that people face and giving us real useful recommendations on how all of us can move forward to do better. The uh, theme for today's graduation is social advocacy in an era of increased racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. And you spoke to these issues, of course, with tremendous passion. Uh, pathos and understanding. And because of that, it's our great pleasure to award you, uh, Diana Lee and Asanto, with the first Sophia University Community of Recognition Award of Distinction. This is an award Sophia will be giving out each year to someone who really exemplifies the best of us in advocating for social justice. Your recent work uh, advocating for the rights of Asian American Pacific Islanders, particularly the public service announcements, and other detailed work you did with members of the uh, acting community, your work with the LGBTQ community, particularly the winning the Matthew Shepard Prize for your films and all that you did during the AIDS crisis up to working with children with special needs and so much more. The other day, I actually saw you or heard you on a, on a podcast, uh, which was Shannon Lee, Bruce Lee's daughter's podcast. And Shannon Lee called you uh, a, a social justice warrior. And I think that's a title very well earned. And because of that, it's with great pride that I can now present you with the Sophia University Community Recognition Award for Distinction. Thank you. Now, as we move on, I'd like to invite two of our graduates, uh, graduates to share their thoughts on our theme. We'll first hear from Tiffany Howard, a graduate of the Masters of Arts in Transpersonal Psychology. And then next, we'll hear from David Hester of the PhD program. Both, I am quite sure, will inspire you with their words. And after the student responses, we will begin the awarding of degrees. Greetings. My name is Tiffany Howard, and I'm a graduate of the Master of Arts in Transpersonal Psychology program. To Dr. Bob Frager, Sophia's founder and president emeritus, acting president, Dr. Cahoon, members of the board of trustees, distinguished faculty, parents, friends, alumni, and my cohorts, the graduating class of 2021. I am deeply honored and humbled to address you on behalf of the Global Master of Arts in Transpersonal Psychology program graduates. The theme of this year's commencement is social advocacy in an era of increased racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. Racism, discrimination, and xenophobia. The persistent shadows that marinate in our cellular memory and are woven into our social human interactions have distorted the human psyche since the formation of biological constructs. Paul Gustav Jung would be salivating because shadow work is the challenge of the day. Brothers and sisters, many of you may be contemplating this question. Do I sit or do I stand? I don't think we're going to get away with spiritual bypassing. There's no time for privileged comfort. We've been here before. In 1946, German clergy Martin Niemöller expressed, first they came for the socialist and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I didn't speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. The time is now for all of us, for you graduates, my dear cohorts, to stand. You may be in resistance to standing. However, we all know that resistance is merely an opportunity for greater self-discovery. Who else are more prepared to lead, guide, facilitate healing, and show the way, the way to love, compassion, kindness, the way to interconnectedness. Who else than Sophia graduates? One of the greatest social advocates of our time, a man who one could say transformed through a 27 year dark night of the soul, 
the late President Nelson Mandela said, it is in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. Brothers and sisters, who better to be a transformative force in this perceived reality than those who understand that separation is an illusion, that the other is a reflection of oneself. No time like the present moment to use our embodied transpersonal transformative learning, inquiry, deep listening, ways of knowing, contemplative practices, compassion in order to enhance and cultivate well-being, community, balance, inclusion, cooperation, and wholeness. Healing these collective shadow aspects will require aligning with others who look differently from us, talk differently than we do, whose pseudo reality is different from ours. After our time at Sophia, if you're still wondering what it means to be a self-actualizing human being, I submit to you that it has something to do with choice. As Marianne Williamson voiced, the choice to be used as an instrument of love right here, right now. As C.G. Jung explained, a man who is unconscious of himself acts in a blind, instinctive way and is in addition fooled by all the illusions that arise when he sees everything that he is not conscious of in himself coming to meet him from outside as projections upon his neighbor. As we witness these dark projections upon African-Americans, Mexican immigrants, Asian Americans, Jewish Americans, Muslim Americans, the LGBTQI community, women, and our fellow Mexican Americans, I put forth the question again. Will you sit or will you stand? Stand as the embodiment of loving kindness, strong heartedness, the peacemaker. And as Angelis Arian would articulate, stand as the warrior, teacher, healer, and visionary, taking right action moving into a space of being while standing for something greater than yourselves. Lastly, my dear cohorts, remember to be gentle with yourselves and others, to meet people where they are, to remain open-hearted, to laugh and play. Remember to be your greatest and highest selves. Namaste, aho, umbutu, gasius, shishe, mimin. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being available today. And thank you for being here with me. Virtually, of course. My name is David Hester and I'm a 2021 graduate of Sophia University. It has been a wild ride to reach this point. And I know to speak for myself, I am celebrating with all of you and just celebrating our journey and how hard it's been to complete uh, you know, this scholarship journey during these times. Speaking of these times, the condition of the social unrest, the importance of social advocacy, allyship, as well as an increased sense of racism and xenophobia in the world. Here at Sophia, I've learned that diversity is the secret sauce in anything. My cohorts have had, I mean, you name the label that we put people under, and I've 
connected with them. I've worked with them and I found ways to thrive with them. And it's a been, it's just a beautiful journey. It is completely a testament to the importance of building advocacy as well as allyship for people who don't usually have a voice. I've been supported by so many of the professors during my time here, and it's been wonderful. Without them, I'm completely certain I would not have made it this far. Truthfully, I have been blessed to be around such great teachers here at Sophia University. And it's important that we continue to use what we've been taught to teach the rest of the world the importance of gathering together, learning together, growing together. It's important that we continue to strive for greatness in everything that we do and strive to support those who don't have a voice. In Sophia, I've learned to use my voice. I've learned to use the skills and resources around me to reach goals. I encourage each of you on your next journey to use these skills, but use them to improve your community, improve the racial dynamic between each other, to end discrimination. And number one, to do it with a sense of gratitude and find the compassion within yourself to help others. My name is David Hester. It's been a pleasure to be on this journey with you. Much love to everyone. To achieve the Bachelor of Arts completion degree, students must complete at least 48 hours of coursework at Sophia University after transferring in prior college work. It is a one-of-a-kind program, the only entirely online program that students with an interest in psychology can complete with an emphasis on the transpersonal. I am pleased to announce the following bachelor degree candidates. Candace Mitchell. Aria Scherzoy. Leon Taffa. The Master of Business Administration prepares students with the leadership, management, and analytic skills to contribute to a broad range of industries and organizations. Students complete 48 units that integrate transpersonal psychology with traditional management education. This year's MBA candidates are... Han Ding. Yunyan Li. Cheng Peng. Argavan Rahebi. Wei Song. G. Tang. Ying Yao. Yuhan Zhang. Sophia University offers a Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology. The graduates receiving the MACP degree have completed 90 units of coursework integrating studies in counseling and transpersonal psychology and have begun to make a clinical contribution through their practicum. These graduates have fulfilled the California State academic requirements for licensure as marriage and family therapist or licensed professional counselors. This year's graduates are Dima Carr Paul Chang Kara Connor Leslie Doyle Mariah Gibson
Sasha Kaisa. Barbara Lazarini. Sarah Miscardo. Masters of Arts in Transpersonal Psychology. Students receiving the Masters of Arts in Transpersonal Psychology complete at least 48 units of graduate level studies in transpersonal theory and practice. The coursework includes personal exploration, embracing the breadth and depth of transpersonal psychology, and may include a professional specialization in coaching, spiritual psychology, creativity, or eco-psychology. This year's MATP Master's Candidates are Laura Burkett Tiffany Howard Don McGregor Amy Tyler Haley Winter Abigail Wolf The graduates receiving a Master of Science in Computer Science have completed at least 48 units of coursework in the areas of data science, software engineering, and artificial intelligence. This degree also gives students an opportunity to further their knowledge in foundational and applied topics in the field of computer science. I am pleased to announce this year's MSCS degree candidates. Jean Shen Duan. Ming Fu Ying Kong Fu Yi Chen Gao Shiki Guo Jinhee Lee Say Naguboina Joseph Newman Jiao Peng Anu Prakash Dharani Sama Nimit Kumar Shantam Yuan Juin Sung Menglu Wu Zhentian Zi Si Yu Yi Sophia has been at the forefront of providing doctoral level clinical education. Through the curriculum and the Doctor of Psychology and Clinical Psychology, students are exposed to both humanistic, transpersonal, and traditional clinical subjects, participate in an internship, and conduct independent research. This year's PsyD candidates are Karimbir Khalsa. The doctorate is the highest academic degree a school can award. Sophia University 
offers the PhD in psychology with a concentration in transpersonal psychology and the PhD in transpersonal psychology. In addition to their coursework, doctoral students complete a line of independent research producing a book length dissertation. This year's PhD candidates are David Hester. Chantress Parks Kimberly Christensen Pedro Felix Covarrubias Siuk Hyun Gyum Liu Jiawe Daniel Seda Now we come to the exciting time, which is the confirmation of, of degrees. So could I ask all of the graduates who will be receiving a bachelor's degree Please rise um, wherever you may be. At the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the bachelor's degrees from Sophia University. And all of the rights, privileges, and right, uh, responsibilities thereto pertaining. Thank you, you can sit down. For all of those graduates receiving a master's degree, please stand up. Please rise. At the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the master's degree from Sophia University. All of you, with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto pertaining. You can sit down. Can I ask that family and friends and associates that are participating in this virtual converse, convocation to stand and give a round of applause to the graduates today, and if allowed, even a hug on their achievement. Congratulations to you all. Well, you made it. You made it. Congratulations. Here we are at the conclusion of our commencement ceremony, a chance where we do talk about commencing and moving forward using all the skills that you've learned in a robust manner in your life. But it is a time also for reflection and looking backwards and taking great pride in the accomplishment, the difficulty of writing a doctoral dissertation and doing the research and getting it all done the difficulty and, and, and trials of a master's degree in finishing higher learning, and of course the excitement of completing an undergraduate degree. These are prideful things and things worth taking a moment looking back on and celebrating. And with that, again, I thank the parents, the family, the friends, the teachers, instructors, our faculty, our staff, the board of trustees, our president, and all of our leadership who brought us to this exciting today, day. And with that, I call to a close the 2021 graduation ceremony here at Sophia University.